Here he comes. The pride of paying back is going to go all the way. Undefeated today. The pride of paying back wins the 1974 Gold Cup. During an unlimited career that lasted from 1970 to 1975, George Henley won 12 out of 34 races entered. Although short and stocky in build, Smiling George was a giant of a man behind the wheel of an unlimited hydroplane. Like very few drivers before or since, Henley could guarantee results. A veteran limited pilot, Henley started his Thunderbolt career as a crew member in the 1950s on Bob Gilliam's Miss B and I, and later on Austin Snell's Coral Reef. George started his career driving outboards on Silver Lake, but soon graduated to limiteds, where he made a name for himself as driver of a number of different boats, including George Babcock's Record 7. George's first unlimited ride was the Burian Lady, a former Notre Dame owned by Bob Murphy, a modest budget notwithstanding. George, you made a great name for yourself driving the, uh, the Limiteds, winning a national championship in the 225 class. What do you find is the big uh, difference between driving the smaller boats and, uh, and now the biggies? Is, it, is, the, uh, is making an analogy between the minor leagues and, and the big leagues, is that proper? Yeah, it is. It's a lot different. Um, the uh, boat is bigger and uh, going 150, 165 miles an hour, um, it's just... Uh, I am find myself watching the engine more, and uh, you have to drive it differently. The little boat, you just hold wide open all the way. And the big one, I think I've been told that uh, you'll blow, they'll blow engines. And we did blow a couple. We threw two rods, but it was due to weak rods. But uh, that's a big difference. Last week, I think I got the feel of it real well, and uh, it feels a lot more like my little one all the time. What's the difference in this year in George Henley as a driver? Is it getting the feel of the boat, getting uh, to uh, getting used to the faster speeds, or what? Uh, getting used to the boat, I think. Getting the feel of the boat. It's starting to all fall into place now, I think. I think we're ready. Henley raised many eyebrows when he finished a strong second in the 1970 Seattle Seafair Regatta. He won the final heat and defeated the overall winner, Miss Budweiser, with Dean Chenoweth in the process. George spent 1971, 72, and part of 73 in Bob Fendler's Lincoln Thrift 7 and a quarter percent special. His best finish was a second place in the 1973 Champion Spark Plug Regatta at Miami. He finished out the 73 season driving the Red Man 2 for Jim McCormick. Then came the historic 1974 racing season, when Henley joined forces with Dave Herensberger and crew chief Jim Lucero on the Winged Wonder Pay and Pack, which was the boat that had popularized the horizontal stabilizer wing in unlimited racing. After paying his dues with the budget teams, George finally had a ride that was equal to his ability. The Winged Wonder had won four out of nine races and the National High Point Championship in 1973 with Mickey Remond as driver. It was up to Henley to do it all over again. In his first appearance with the Rolls-Royce Merlin-powered pay and pack at Miami, George experienced mechanical difficulty after winning both of his preliminary heats. But a week later in Washington, D.C., Henley won the President's Cup on the Potomac River. He defeated the likes of Bill Muncy in Atlas Van Lines, Leif Borgerson in the turbine-powered U-95, and Howie Benz in Miss Budweiser. There could be no doubt about it. George had achieved the big time. He followed this with victories at Owensboro, Kentucky, the Tri-Cities, Washington, Seattle, Washington, Dayton, Ohio, San Diego, California, and Madison, Indiana. Henley thus became the first driver to win seven high point races in a single season. So we got a heck of a boat race. One, two, one, two. Going into that north turn, slamming out at the end of lap one. So the Budweiser is coming on the inside. She's got the lead on the outside. George Henley in the pay and pack. And just the gauging, crowd appreciates the, it. Just gauging the, the crowd hand. reaction, they're loving it. One particularly memorable contest was the APBA Gold Cup on Seattle's Lake Washington at Sand Point. All day long, George battled side by side with Miss Budweiser, 
sharing the same rooster tail on extremely rough water in perhaps the greatest performance of his career. And through it all, Henley impressed one and all with his friendliness and cheerfulness. He was a regular guy. It's no wonder that he acquired the nickname Smiling George. According to rumor, he also smiled at his fellow drivers out on the race course, especially when he passed them, which he did frequently. Now the pack, now the pack is making a move on the outside. Look at that, you couldn't get a closer boat race. Following a brief retirement from the sport, Henley rejoined the pay and pack team at the third race of the 1975 season in Owensboro. In the short time that George had been away, the Weissfield, chauffeured by Billy Shoemaker, had garnered most of the glory and appeared to be a likely bet to unseat pay and pack from its national championship throne. On the first lap of the first heat at Owensboro, Henley's boat swapped ends and caved in a sponson. Pay and Pack was forced to withdraw, and the race went to Weissfields. All hope of retaining the high points crown appeared lost. Despite a formidable points deficit, George sparked Pay and Pack to one of the great comebacks in sports history. The winged wonder took third at the next race in Detroit. The team finally found the winning combination a week later at Madison where Henley retained his title in the Indiana Governor's Cup and decisively defeated the Weissfields. Smiling George followed this triumph with victories at Dayton, the Tri-Cities, Seattle, and San Diego. The Tri-Cities victory was special because it was George's second straight Gold Cup. George and the pack racked up three preliminary heat victories and cruised home with a comfortable third place in the final heat to claim the overall victory. The end result was a third straight season title for Pay and Pack, which scored 8,864 points to 8,213 for Weissfields. Never before or since has one boat's momentum been so effectively halted by the performance of another boat. In his last season of unlimited class participation, Henley won more races than any other driver and averaged more points per race than anyone else. As a boat racer, the pride of Eatonville had no worlds left to conquer. His legacy to the sport is a standard of competitive excellence that few drivers in any racing category have ever achieved. In honor of these achievements, the Hydroplane and Race Boat Museum is proud to induct smiling George Henley into the Unlimited Hydroplane Hall of Champions. <laughs>